for a minute. Um, you know, there are many changes that are taking place in myself and also in the world, you know. And, uh, you know, since they passed this thing about, you know, you don't have to wear masks and do all this stuff, uh, I decided to do a project and I'm interested in seeing how people respond to this. Um, there are certain days of the week that I can allow people to come here and participate in in-person meditations, you know, um, like certainly Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. You know, if people want to fly in from out of town, they, I don't have room to put people up, but they can certainly get an Airbnb somewhere for a few days and attend classes. Uh, I'm doing this because I'm seriously thinking of moving and finding a place where I can set up a center. Uh, the places I've been thinking about are maybe like Charleston, South Carolina. It seems like a very charming, and quite beautiful city, actually. I was thinking of possibly um, Santa Fe, maybe San Miguel de Allende in Mexico, you know, where I can set up shop and run a center and have people come, you know, and do meditation, training, have retreats. If anybody knows of a place that might be interesting, let me know. But don't just give me a place because you happen to live there and be convenient for you. you know, because that's not going to work, you know. I mean, it has to be something interesting and something that, you know, really would be a good place to set up a meditation center. <coughs> I would, if people want to come to these classes, I will have in my house. Uh, it'll start around the beginning of June, because my daughter just had her second vaccination, and she won't be two weeks through that until the 27th of May. <laughs> uh, the only requirement I will have for anybody that wants to come is that they have to be vaccinated. And I'm not interested in any excuses and what your feelings are, right and wrong about this. You know, if you like it or you don't like it, to me, it's all bullshit. Just get a vaccination if you want to come here and sit in these classes, because I don't want to give anyone any kind of COVID because somebody has some religious belief about vaccinations. So I'm, I'm happy to do this and I'm looking forward to it, frankly. You know, I mean, you can come. I mean, people can't hang out in my apartment because of me, I just got a really good job. And she'd be working out of the, you know, mostly out of her bedroom with the computer there. But we'll have class. And then if you want to go swimming, I have a pool in this building. If you want to go to a gym, I have a gym in this building. If you want to have a lounge and you need to work, I have a lounge in this building. I mean, there are things that can accommodate people but I don't have room for people to stay in my apartment. And you would have to just get an Airbnb for two, three days that you would be here. And the days that I think I can do this are Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. So if people want to come, you're welcome. And uh, I would love to, and also another element to this, it's not a big apartment, I probably, cannot do more than two or three people at a time in a class. So people would have to make reservations, you know, and uh, Jennifer's gonna make out a spreadsheet for renovate reservations. So uh, that's what I'm really trying to do. I'm trying to get a step out of this COVID insanity of living in quarantined and being isolated from the world and start doing this meditation in person because there it's even stronger. And these classes are pretty strong here, but it gets even stronger when we do them in person. I can do hands-on healing work with people <clears throat> and it'll get me back into the game again. I really <laughs> miss it, you know? And I do, don't want to travel around the world doing this. You know, I really, I've stopped doing that. I can't do that anymore. I used to accommodate everybody by going to their hometown to do retreats. But from June forward, I mean, I'll do retreats in the future, but you all are going to have to figure out a way to come where I am. I mean, it's the only way I'm going to be able to sustain this, because if I do another year like 2019, 
frankly, I don't think I'll survive. It was just too much. To travel 98,000 miles in order to do retreats with people. So it's going to change a bit, but I'm really open to doing it. And I'm really open to, you know, working with people, training them. And my job is to pass on everything I've learned. That's my job. It's not to be a guru, a teacher, to be important that way. It's to just give away everything I've learned to people that truly are willing to make the effort to go beyond the comfort of their lives to get it. And I think that really is the key to all of this. It certainly was the key with me and Rudy, you know, because I had to go beyond the comfort of my life. I mean, I'll never forget when I asked him to move into his house, you know, I knew that that would be an amazing step for me in my spiritual growth. And he, he said, yes, he said, yes, you have to come. And I was living on the second floor of his ashram. It was like a 2000 square foot space that I was living there by myself, and it's surrounded by museum quality art everywhere you, excuse me, everywhere you looked. <clears throat> and one day he invited about 15 or 20 people to come stay there for a weekend. And my life was never the same. I mean, I'd come home at night. I didn't even know where the hell I was gonna sleep that night. I would go to where I was sleeping and somebody was sleeping there, you know? <clears throat> so I had to adjust myself. I had to say much to myself, so why are you here? Are you here to have comfort? Are you here to live in a museum? Or are you here to get the teachings of this amazing person who God has put in your life? And it finally, that was the bottom line. It wasn't comfort. It wasn't my independence. It was nothing. It was nothing but I was there to get the teachings of this extraordinary man that God put into my life. <clears throat> and I even once complained to Rudy. I said, Rudy, I was walking down the street with him. And I said, Rudy, I have nowhere to sleep. And, my, and he looked at me <coughs> with a little smile on his face. And he pointed to a weed growing in the crack of a New York City sidewalk. And he said, that weed has more courage than you. <clears throat> I'll never forget that. It was one of the great, I never complained again about anything. You know, you know it was an amazing education. <clears throat> so I'm going to open this thing. It'll begin around the beginning of June. If you'd like to come, you know, people will have to kind of reserve space because I, I don't want to have more than two or three people at a time coming here. You know, I don't want even to give the apartment building the feeling that I'm running some kind of a center here. Or, you know, I just want <coughs> people to come. They can come for two days, three days. People that live in the city can come up, you know. We go out and have lunch afterwards. You know, if you want to go swimming, there's a pool. It's a nice pool. It's a big pool, too. And, <coughs> and you go to the gym. You go walk through the town. See, Connecticut is really a pretty place. Anyway, if anyone knows of a place that really might be interesting to live in and to start a center, you know, I mean, don't tell me Woodstock because I lived in Woodstock and I had a wonderful house there and it was on top of a mountain. It was a staggering place. I think some of you saw it that are here, you know, but I, you know, the weather, I mean, from, it was from like mid-November to the middle of March, you saw nothing but white. <laughs> It was very cold and very, you know, and I don't want to live through that again. <laughs> Although I must say, I miss a little bit that house. It was really something. Okay, we'll have a meditation class. And if anyone has questions after the class, I'll be happy to try and answer. I muted everybody, unmuted everybody. And does anyone have a question? I would like to ask.
Does anyone have a question? I have a question, Stuart, Chris. Um, Stuart, I've always associated the unconscious with the hara. Is that an accurate thing to do? No. I mean, the hara is a point inside your system that connects, you know, spiritual with life, with kundalini. Uh, you go into the unconscious when you start moving through the cosmos, through time and space. And that's where the unconscious is. It's not the hara. The hara is just a chakra. <laughs> it's a, a very important point. It's like uh, the central point in a triangle that connects life with, and then Kundalini. And the hara enables you to develop and open and strengthen the rest of the chakra system. You need rootedness. So the hara is not the unconscious, you understand the, but working on the hara, developing that chakra will enable you to, you know, activate Kundalini and you'll, you'll go into the unconscious world. I mean, the conscious world makes up maybe 5% mm -hmm. of life, you know, and rest of it is in the unconscious. All creative energy is in the unconscious. And as we get more open, we tap more of that creative energy. Unconscious energy, you know, conscious energy is, is outside of, you know, the realm of anything we understand and anything, you know, it's sort of a transcendental plane. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't equate the Hara with the unconscious. But the Hara is a very important element inside us, which enables us to tap tap energy in the unconscious and not be driven crazy by it, be able to use it in our life. Thank you. You're welcome. Does anyone else have a question they would like to ask? So can you just speak on you know, moving out of the mental you know, thought process and into the depths of the third chakra? Honestly, Wendy, all that takes is training. You have to truly develop you know, yourself to where you can do that. That's all it takes. You know, it'll always be mental stuff. But when you have the training to stay focused in the hara, in the chakra below the navel, you can detach yourself from it. And that takes time. That's the work of our meditation is learning how to do this, conditioning oneself to do this. And it, it happens through repetition, through doing it over and over again to finally we master it. And we're no longer, you know, uh, we're no longer, you know, we're, you know, the, our thoughts don't suck us dry. They don't eat us alive. We can detach ourselves from them. But the only answer to that question is it takes time and it takes a lot of work. Because what you're doing basically is transforming everything you've learned from the time you were born. I mean, you grow up, think about it, you know, <laughs> figure it out. All of school is about figuring it out, thinking about it. Nobody ever tells you, get scented and tap creative energy. So we have to recondition ourselves from literally the day we're born to be able to ultimately get grounded that way. And that's why Rudy always said, work brings more work. It really does, because it takes a lot of work to transform everything we've lived with 
into the ability to stay centered and detach ourselves from the thoughts, emotions, sexual energy. It doesn't mean we drive up and it doesn't mean we don't use these things, but we're not sucked dry by them. They don't eat us alive. I mean, there are times when you got to use the rational mind. It really is important. But one doesn't spend their whole life trying to figure out the world because you'll never get anywhere. I mean, you just eat, you know, the life itself will just eat you alive. This is too much. It's too vast. It's infinite. It's beyond all human comprehension. But the work is getting focused, getting centered, being able to use the rational mind without it eating us alive, without us spending the whole day battling tension, battling polarity, battling conflict. And that's the work, bringing that, all that energy down below the navel. And as Rudy always says, what's killing us can give us life but it needs our help. We need to do the work. If we don't do the work, it's what you got for the rest of your life. I need it. <laughs> it's what you, so you better enjoy it and be happy about it because that's what people have. If they don't do the work, if you do the inner work, you have the mind and you use it in many ways, but it doesn't have you. You have sexual energy that is used in life, you know, but it doesn't have you. You have emotions and you're capable of transforming them into love, to joy, compassion. And those emotions that you're not living in a swamp of emotions that really suck all of your energy out of you. But we need emotions, otherwise we're like dried up people, you know? We need to have emotions, but we cannot be trapped by them and sucked dry by them. And we have to be able to transform all of that emotional angst, all those soap operas, you know, into joy, into love, into happiness. Into So your question connects with Chris's question, you know, because the way to do that is we got to develop the hara. We have to build chi inside ourselves. That's how we do that. And then that heart open, the throat open, mind is quiet. We get knowledge, we get wisdom comes from the universe. I mean, you know, what I teach, honestly, is a very simple thing. It's not a complicated study of the cosmos and gods and demigods and all this stuff, religion and dogma. It's a very simple thing, what I teach is basically, it's like a triangle. Being grounded in the chakra below the navel, living in the world and being connected with spirit. A triangle. I mean, it's like in the, you know, Christian religion, you know, it's the father, son and the holy, it's a triangle, a sacred triangle. Does anyone else have a question you'd like to ask? Hi, Stuart Chikor. Yes. yes. During, during the meditation, 
it felt like there were many aspects or beings, whatever, um, that were giving gifts that I received on all different levels. And so I wonder, I can feel it intensely during meditation and then during the day. Shikor, what is the question? How do I, is it necessary to be conscious of these gifts during the day, of what they are? Why not? Why must you lose consciousness of your spiritual practice during the day? I mean, a spiritual life doesn't stop when this meditation class ends. It goes on all day. Doesn't mean you do the double breathing exercise all day, but you bring the energy of these classes, the development of the chakra system, you know, all the experiences you have in these, you bring them into your day and, they, and you allow them to get you strong enough so that each moment of your day becomes sacred. So you don't just leave it here when the class is finished, you take it into the day. If I didn't take this class into the day, I couldn't do the class the next day, you know? Because by the end of the day, my whole energy would be eaten alive, you know? So you gotta take the development of your inner life through the day because the spiritual life doesn't stop when this class is finished. It continues all day. And if it doesn't continue for it, it's just telling you, you got to work deeper in class. So just be grateful for your experiences. Let them nurture you. You know, let them become Shakti inside you, developing your inner life. And let them build a system in you that enables you to truly live in the moment. Every day is sacred. Every moment is sacred. And we're not here to waste that time. And then you think, I'll go to class tonight and have a spiritual life. It doesn't work like that. Spiritual life is 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Does anyone else have a question they would like to ask? So I just like to end this with what I began today. You know, as of the beginning of June, on June 7th, I can't do it, which is a Monday. But as of the beginning of June, if people want to come here, they're welcome. But please, you know, let me know so that I don't have more than three people at a time here. Because if it gets too crowded, I can't do it, you know. And I'd be very grateful and happy to teach meditation classes. And that will lead me to the next step, which would be to find a space that will be big enough to truly have, you know, classes like I used to have them years ago. You're all welcome and God bless you all for being here. Thank you. And uh, I hope you have a wonderful evening. Thank you. And there'll be class tomorrow evening, same time. And I'm looking forward to seeing everybody. And bless you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you sir. sir.